Hello. Today, I'm going to be sharing some bad news about my van. So I'm going to be showing you the damage that's been caused, what actually happened, a lesson everybody could learn from from this, and also, what's it like living without a van? I purposely bought a van uh, about a year ago now for some specific reasons, and now I've gone back to not actually having one. So how has that been? I've been given a replacement vehicle, which is a Mercedes, so surely that's going to be better than my van, isn't it? Well, have a look later for the pros and cons which I've got of the Mercedes. So I do apologise for the first part of this video, which is coming up now. I did film this before and I'm really depressed, really sad about it. So please forgive me for that. But this is what actually happened to my van. Hello. It's not good news today, I'm afraid. Unfortunately, my van has been involved in an accident. I wasn't in the van at the time when the accident occurred. The van was in a car park, minding its own business, not causing anybody any harm, when unfortunately, somebody drove into it. I was alerted by my dash cam, so as soon as I got the notification on my watch that there's been an impact, I went to the car park, and I was approached by three witnesses, thankfully, three witnesses that had actually seen the incident take place got the registration number, took a photo and watched the person who did it just drive on it. I mean, why would you do that? Why? Why do you hit somebody else's property and then just drive off? There's just no reason for it. Don't tell me that you didn't actually see the damage occur, because, oh my word. Have a look at this. Listen. Listen to the noise it makes. You can see the van shake. You can see the van shake and you can hear the noise. So they've obviously known that they've done it. Now, I'm really, really lucky as far as this is concerned because one, I had three witnesses who came forward, took a photo of the culprit uh, and also the registration number, which has just been fantastic. And secondly, the dash cam footage. Having that dash cam, I knew that incident took place and I was able to get there in time for the witnesses to, to still be there because they could have driven off. Now, on the same night that my vehicle was hit, I saw on the, uh, one of the Facebook pages for the, the local area which I live in, uh, that another vehicle had also been hit, completely separate car park, completely unrelated. They didn't have any witnesses, they didn't have any dash cam footage, no CCTV. So unfortunately for them, it's gonna cost them. They're gonna have to pay uh, their own access for the insurance policy, probably increased premiums, loss of no claims bonus, they're going to have to claim the insurance. Now, I am very, very lucky, the situation which I've been in, and a dash cam. <laughs> I've done a video on this before, nobody really watched it. I just still don't believe people see the benefit in them. But, oh my word, dash cams are so invaluable. If you haven't got a dash cam, please just go and get one. It doesn't have to cost the earth, it doesn't have to cost an awful lot of money, but get a dash cam with parking mode and it could definitely save you money. I've been very, very fortunate in this incident. I really have. Like I say, I've talked about dash cams before and there's so, so many different benefits from them, not just from the parking mode, but determine who's liable in the event of an accident. Damage wise to my vehicle, I'm not entirely, I'm not exactly going to know um, until the insurance assessor's had a look at it. Uh, the vehicle is being taken away, going to be provided with a courtesy vehicle. But I got a few little presents in the car park waiting for me on the ground as it happened all these bits were there on the floor lots of little clips uh, so damage wise the the bumper has quite clearly been taken quite a brunt of the impact um, this panel here has got a scratch at the bottom and well, it's actually hanging off I didn't realize that until now and then the rear passenger panel is dented um, and scratched and you can see actually a bit of the the colour of the paintwork of the, the culprit who's done it. Any more damage to the subframe? I wouldn't have thought so, I mean it was only a small car that hit it so I think it probably is quite just a cosmetic, um, just a few clips that's probably gone on it um, but obviously whilst the bumper is hanging off as it is it's not something which it can drive. This is probably one of my worst videos because I'm just so down about it, just so really disappointed that it's happened because you know it's my pride and joy you know I've put a lot of time and a lot of effort into this van yeah it is going to come back 
Um, how long it'll take, I don't know, because obviously, as you know, at the moment, we've got a massive problem with parts. Um, you know, you can't get hold of the parts. So if they can't get hold of the parts to do it, then I'm going to be in a Kurds car for uh, for quite a long time, which obviously I don't want. There's a VW show this weekend, which I was meant to be going to. Not going to have a van, you know, not being able to go away in the weekend. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just so depressing. So the courtesy car, is it going to be able to do what I need it to do? Um, I don't think it's going to have a roof rack, so I'm not going to be able to go surfing or anything like that. Am I going to be able to get as much luggage in it? It's just really a shocker. You know, we're in the summer now, the summer's started, the kids are just broken up on holiday, and I cannot get out in my van. Flipping so infuriating, really, really annoying. Um, why didn't the person just stop? Like I say, it's probably not an awful lot of damage, it probably would have been a hell of a lot cheaper just for them to empty the pocket with however much it's going to cost just to get it repaired at the local garage rather than having to go through insurance and all the increased costs which I'm going to have with that. The higher vehicle, I mean the higher vehicle is probably going to be like a hundred quid a day or something ridiculous like that. You could be doing without all that, you know, if only they'd have just stopped and been honest about it. Because I don't think the damage is bad at all. I think it probably is just a, a few clips and things. Obviously an engineer does need to have a look at it to make sure that there is no damage to the subframe etc. But, you know, a bit of paint, a bit of clips, pop, pull out that dent on the passenger side and I think it'll be alright. So really disappointed I'm going to be out this without this for probably a reasonable amount of time. So I've been given a courtesy car as my replacement vehicle and here it is. It's the Mercedes GLB AMG 1.3 petrol 7 speed automatic and it's an SUV. But it's small SUV. I've got a van which is massive and this is just like a dinky car. Let's have a look at it, see what it's really like. First of all, driving wise, it's actually really nice. It's a nice interior, it's nice and modern. Love these digital uh, dash, the digital screens. Steering wheel's fantastic, really good feel, flat bottom. The buttons on here, absolutely love. Volume control is a roller button, and then you've got these thumb uh, touch pads here. So far, so good, but fuel consumption. Fuel consumption is worse than my van. Now this is a dinky little car, but the fuel consumption is poor. I'm averaging 32 miles per gallon. Yes, it is petrol. Yes, it is a reasonable size vehicle for such a small petrol engine. Um, but I was hoping for a little bit of better fuel economy. Um, nice place to be though. It's obviously Mercedes, so it is gonna be a carbon fiber effect on the dash. Uh, nice comfortable seats which are heated. Uh, another positive before we get on to the negatives uh, and that's the air conditioning. With it being such a small environment the air conditioning in this heat wave is far better than it is in a van so yeah gotta say I am pleased with the air conditioning. Other than that I don't really have any positives. Let's have a look in the boot. So here we go, it's really small. Uh, it isn't particularly helped by the fact that this vehicle does have the option for seven seats. So there are additional two seats in here. So where you'd have the, usually you'd have the, the deeper boot, it's got two seats. So for me, it's just not helping. So by the time you've got the paddleboard in there, which takes up a reasonable amount of room, you've just not got the room for other things. Now, obviously I use this for the beach quite a lot. Um, and I'm going to be taking, you know, your Kodak, your fridge, uh, changes of clothes, wetsuits, uh, all the gear associated with, you know, the beach, the dry robes, the towels. Just can't carry it all. It's really frustrating. It does have uh, roof rails, um, but because it's not my vehicle, I can't put roof crossbars on there. I've not got any to do it, so I'm not actually going to go and buy them. Um, I can't have the roof box on the top to give it extra space for that because obviously I've not got the crossbars and I can't carry the bikes, you know, I certainly can't fit the bikes in here and it's not got a tow bar so I can't actually put the bike carrier on the tow bar. 
So at the, it's just not practical, you know, for what I need it at the moment. And also with it being a car, it's really nice. So as you can see, I have been to the beach and there's a bit of sand on this carpet. It's been battered down and things, but it needs a hoover where in the van, I can just get a brush, brush it all out and off you go. Now, I can't carry the portable shower. The portable shower comes to me with the beach. You clean off your feet, you clean off any sand which you've got on you, get yourself all nice and cleaned up, and then you can go off on your, on your day. I can't carry that. There's just not enough room for it. So with it being luxury carpets in here, I'm really reluctant to be going to the beach and getting dirty and things like that because it's, it's just too nice for that. And it's not mine, so I need to really keep on top of it. It's actually only done 12 miles when I got delivered this, so it is brand spanking new. So any marks that come back on this, it's going to be down to me, and that isn't good. The purpose of the van, when I got a van, was to use it for things such as that. Your dirty days out, your days at the beach, your walking and things like that. And now I'm back to a car, I'm realising why I did get a van, because I can do all that stuff and not have to worry about things like that. And I can't take the toilet, you know. Where am I going to use the toilet in here? You just can't use it. Kadak, the cooking. Well, there's just not enough room to be carrying the gas bottles, the stuff for cleaning up after you've been doing stuff. The room just isn't there. A car for me now. I can't go back to a car. It just isn't practical. Yeah, this is quite a small one. You know, you can get bigger ones, your X5s or your probably your GLE as far as Mercedes is concerned, which is absolutely massive. But I'm still not going to be able to put the bikes in. I'm probably still not going to be able to carry all the paddle boards and everything. Can't go surfing. I can't put a surfboard in here. Although I didn't put the surfboard in my van, I'd have put it on the van. Again, roof bars, crossbars, not got them, so I can't do it. It would actually be a good height for a, a roof box on here, but I've just not got the crossbars for it. But if it was my vehicle, then yeah, to utilize it, it probably wouldn't be too bad. You know, you can easily access it, put your crossbars on there, and I would be able to carry the surfboard and the roof box, but it's not my van, so I can't. It's not a van, it's a car. And don't I know it? There's just so much I can't do. I can't work from the van. You know, I can just easily pull out the table and the chairs and sit in the back of the van and actually do some work on my laptop. It's just not convenient in here in a car. I never did it in the car when I previously had a car because there just wasn't the space and there isn't again now. So it's just not good for that. There's no TVs for the kids. There's no PlayStation. You know, you can't keep them occupied with that in here. There's just so many things I miss from the van. It is nice in some ways to be driving a car again. I mean, some of the Mercedes interior in here as I've touched on the steering wheel and the comfort of the seats, etc. It is something which I do miss as a car, but that's about it. I really am missing my van. I can't sleep in it. You know, it's, it's the summer holidays now and we should be out there. We should be doing things every single day, utilizing the van, and I just can't. It really couldn't have happened at a worse time. Just a complete nightmare, but hopefully it isn't gonna be long. Hopefully I will have my van back very, very soon. After seeing the dubs at the beach, which I saw the other week, I've got that video here. I really, really am keen to get my van back. So if you haven't seen that video, do take a look. For now, thanks for watching. Take care. I shall see you soon.